pockets. I agree with you, Phil. I like my eggs sunny side up. I'm okay with breaking eggs, but when you're breaking the omelet to make an omelet, don't make no sense. Yeah. Throw all crystals. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. All gems must die. This whole thing is big space. Look at this quartz. We came out of here with next to this far. It looks like lapidolite in the quartz. I thought it was a cluster, yeah. but they're just all stuck together. I think we're going to get This is going to take a shot, I think. Listen to this. <laughs> yeah. This one, this one, and all of this. Look, all of that will go if we pull the wrong rock. Fucking pull those rocks from the podcast. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yep. But um, also, it can lead to Ken's like. Because it's technically spot green. Right, we saw that we were finding those little greens and there's only a small patch of that crap. Yeah. Look at that cluster. Yeah, yeah, look at that little cluster. Mm -hmm. Funky little thing. These will be fun crystals to wash out. Oh, but yeah, I'm working this thing right here and it's going all the way back. It's all connected. Let's see if I can't get it on one piece. A little twin. This has that. Everything it had over there is you seen lapidolite? No, Phil, you seen lapidolite yet? It looks like in the yeah. fish play over here in the quartz. There's yeah. Little oh, there's another crystal clear. That would be uh, sick. Oh, it's a DT. Almost another bucket. Yeah. Watch out, get me to dump a bunch of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, it does. Oh, it's a DT with a twin? Or? Man, this thing's sweet. Oh, it's a DT. Oh, it's a DT. At the very least, we might get some nice acid rock citrine out of this. Yeah, that'd be cool. Some nice vestments, though. Another DT. Oh, with a double twin. Wow. Looks it's got a little one here. And then a little one there. Bismuthite. Little bit of yellow on there. It's a uh, irradiation. It leads to spooky quartz. The yellow, I think, is from either aluminum or manganese in it, I think. Here's a hammer. Another hammer. Oh. Thank you. You on here. I'm just trying to get all the overburden off the top so I can get this thing out. Yeah. Didn't see that coming. Is it almost a DT? No. Nah, it was part of the wall. But <laughs> not a bad a nice chunk. Yeah, it's just right in the corner here. There's a funky cluster too. I was mica on the bottom. This is exciting. I feel like a little kid again. <laughs> I'm going to run up top of Bill, Bill real quick, talk to Steve. I think we're going to change our approach to this. I like the sound of that. Sounds good. I always thought we came in at the wrong angle. Ew. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Wow. That's a, That's a specimen. <laughs> Holy crap. Nice. Yeah, look at the little points. It's all intact. Wow. Oh, I can't yeah. wait to see that one cleaned up. Oh, so you and me both. That is pretty. There's one piece that was touching right here that's still in the rock right here. 
But we can put that back on. Yeah, keep going. Is this one? Yeah, that, that's the one that was touching it there. Sweet. So that will sit right here, just like that. That's an amazing cluster. Yeah, it's gonna be. Oh, I'm so happy that came out in one piece. Might just wash that off, actually. <laughs> That's kind of a good thing. It's a good thing. Keep a cleaner face, you know. It's actually a cool little spot right here, and you're looking at the formation of the pocket. Um, you can see the normal host rock, which is frozen here. But then right through here, you see a lot more mineralization, all the mica here. And then as it gets closer to the clay, the hollow zone, it gets gemmier and cleaner. And it's that hollow space that really allows it the freedom to grow nice and gemmy and clean like these guys. So it's like a sweet spot. Yeah. It's a lot of the rock wood, if it could. It has to do with the cooling rate and just having that space to do it in. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, there's actually a nice little cluster right here, but it's attached to what we call frozen to the wall. Mm -hmm. So the base of these crystals right here is actually just the hard wall. Wow. Kind of like that first big one. And just like you see right down here, there's some nice crystals, but they're frozen onto this wall. Mm -hmm. Those bigger ones that we were getting earlier from here, those free floaters, those are usually cleaner because they're not constricted by anything. We got some more coming out right here. So yeah, there you go. Like you oh, yeah. See this and then this one. That actually, it might be a plate in the floor, so I'd go all the way underneath this shit right up here. If you can get those big pry bars underneath that layer and just pull the whole thing up in one go. Give me a shot. And here's a hammer for you really crumbly over here though. Exactly though, so you get underneath it, it. It may not hold. It's always safest to work far away from the crystal when you're trying to pull them out. Hmm. So you don't damage them or put too much stress or pressure on them from anywhere else. Do you have any other tips? Um, yeah, basically patience. It's real easy to see these things and like see a nice big pretty face in there and just go for it and want to go right for it. But sometimes you really have to just work your way around it and let it fall out. I see too many people go in there and try to manhandle a crystal out and yank it out. And you're just stressing it out and you're gonna fracture it somewhere. It takes a lot of time and effort for these things to form the way they do. And they, it doesn't take much effort to break them. <laughs> So, yeah, you can't undo that. That was excellent, thank you. Oh, no worries. So, it's any open face on it is really easy. And as you can see, we don't really like to wear gloves too much, so. Yeah. But the nice thing about this stuff is this red clay, it seals up any wounds you have really quickly. So if we ever get cut, you just slap yourself with that, and uh, you're good to go. Wow. Nice. It's really moist when it dries, it constricts a lot, and it's just full of good minerals, so it kind of heals you up real quick, and it stops the bleeding. Yeah. Oh, that's what. At least that's what we choose to believe. No, Dude, I honestly, <laughs> my pinky right here, I had, yeah, you can't see it because of clay, but in the mouse trap, before that thing got too bad, I was pulling a crystal out and it like broke and I punched a broken face of a crystal. Nice. So it fully split my finger apart and I just put my hand down on my pants. I looked back at it. I could see the tendons and everything wiggling under there. Whoa. I thought we talked about no more punching crystals. No, I know, it happened. But um, I literally took some of that red clay, slapped it on there. Like the thing was wide, like it should have been stitched or something. And uh, slapped some clay on it and put a Band-Aid on it and left it for two days and went back and the thing had stitched itself back together. Wow. I love this clay. <laughs> the one rule about pegmatites is there's no rules to pegmatites. <laughs> they just do whatever they want. That's a quote from David London, the leading expert on them. <laughs> We've had them in here so many times like, hey, what's going on here or here? Here, you can feel some of this white clay. This stuff is so slippery. Oh wow! And like, it feel like it should be wet, but it's not. Like, it's like coarse. Yeah. It's almost like smooth, like baby powder or something. Uh, where do I go? This looks like it might be a plate. 
I'm getting kind of pinched over here, but I think they still they still stuff. It's just yeah, I see faces all over here. Yeah, it'll be a cool specimen. A mini plate. Oh yeah, there's so much parts in this. See the floor over here is getting deeper. In the pocket. Getting smaller. And a lot of this stuff, even if we don't see a crystal in it right away, every, you basically just throw it all in the bucket. Because there's been plenty of times where we're going through and you don't see anything and you wash it and all of a sudden there's morganites all over it or something like that. <laughs> wow. Is there anything you see in the clay like when morganites start appearing? Um, and at the Swinger Street up the road of it, there's a lot of pink clay. I've seen that a lot. Um, kind of like we see in the wall behind us here, but just a ton of it. Hmm. Um, but not always. It's real fickle. We've seen it in every different form, too. The stuff that grows in the pink clay is typically comes out bright pink already, whereas the others are more of that peachy classic color. Looks like there's a cluster of stuff here. I know, there's a big bowl right here. I'm trying to get under. But it's not solid. It'll come. Yeah, another example of that. You see the mica and the frozen quartz here. Mm -hmm. And then you can see when that frozen quartz gets up into the clay, you actually do get these nice points. But that root of them, that base, is going right into this big frozen area here, full of mica. Um, you, a lot of times we don't know what we're pulling out until we get up top and really see it in daylight and all cleaned off. We like to think we know, though. <laughs> There's a massive cluster of them right in there. Well, that's that same vein I'm working right here. It's a, like the bottom oh, of the yeah, pocket, there's different. like, there's layers in the bottom. It's not a hard bottom. Like, this is the bottom for sure. But up here, there's this little vein where it's kind of muddy in between. And another vein of quartz that runs right down it too, which is interesting. So the right. main open area is up here. So all the big, nice, clean three floaters are going to be through here. But we'll probably get some cool plates off of this. Like, if I can get all this clay off from above it, before trying to yank this out, there'll probably be another cool plate specimen on this chunk right here. So going back in from the top. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> that was really close. <laughs> and this stuff we're breaking off the top here is what we call the onion skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's usually around a pocket zone. The rock isn't as hard as like you'd see over here. Uh huh. And you can see how it's real crumbly like that mm. and layered. That's usually an indication of the pocket. So even when we're drilling, uh, where we can't see the rock at all, if the rock is really soft all of a sudden, the drill starts moving fast, then we're probably near a pocket zone. Yeah, it's bigger than I is thought it, it would be. Is it traveling to the right? It is. Okay, because it's pinching off right here. Yeah, I'm trying to expose more of this, but there's so much to work. You think it could be a similar angle to the Kunzai pocket, or do these do, like, uh, different things? Typically, most of the... Yeah, every pocket's shaped differently because of unique circumstances. But I will say that the 49er and the Kahuna seem to be lined up in the same kind of angle. Um, and this one, it would be on the same angle if it was traveling in this direction. Cool. Um, because the whole pegmatite is traveling down, or it came from below, so it's traveling up at this angle. Mm -hmm. um, but it never travels straight, it kind of tilts and twists and bends and folds in weird ways. 
but so it can be hard to follow but it's those twists and bends that create the air pockets um so kind of like in gold in the a river when it turns and you get the gold in the inside of the bend same thing when the pigmentite flows like that when you get a bend or fold in it um, it creates a slow spot um, that allows the crystals to cool slower and form bigger um, so those are usually good pocket zones so it makes it harder to read but it also makes it worth digging